shocking images reveal a death of mangroves across northern Australia. Now mangroves is a pretty hardy species. They are located in brackish water where fresh water is meeting the salt water. So these mangrove forests are just dying out in northern Australia. Now I've been looking at some maps and where ocean currents flow through. And I'll give you a possible theory. You know, I don't have any testing in the area, obviously, of what's there. But just by looking at the ocean currents and what I talked about in a video about eight, nine months ago called Last Dam for the Ocean vs. the Blob. And basically in that video, I was talking about how Australia is going to be like the gateway to where it's the last half of the ocean because there's a main current that goes right through northern Australia and New Guinea and I'm thinking that's where a lot of that Fukushima radiation got picked up and it's been five and a half years already Fukushima radiation went into the ocean so it's it's about the right time where we're going to start seeing fallouts in like in the southern hemisphere Five years to get from this part of Japan. We know it was in the water transporting tuna in three months. So about five and a half years, we're gonna have these huge die-offs in Chile with the whales, the suicidal squids. You see how it goes back up into that warmer equatorial water, and that water on the equator moves fast. If you get a close-up of northern Australia. This is where the deaths are happening. It's along the southern part of this bay here. And it's about 350 miles of dead zones of mangroves. And you see how it has like this circular effect inside of this bay. It's a large area. So what I'm thinking is that this ocean current of North New Guinea, some of the currents, they're going to go down and they're going to go up through here and I think some of these currents are just kind of getting backed up with a toilet and then some of this bad part of who knows pollution or you know what I think could be Fukushima is depositing in these mangrove forests a mangrove expert says it's the most extreme dieback he's ever seen. The mangrove death occurred across a 700 kilometer stretch and experts believe it is linked to climate change. We've heard that one before. International mangroves expert Dr. Norm Duke said he had no doubt the dieback was related to climate change. No doubt. It's the world's first in terms of a scale of a mangroves that have died, he told the ABC. Dr. Duke flew 200 kilometers between the mouths of the Roper and MacArthur Rivers in the Northern Territory. What happens is you have these rivers in the Southern Hemisphere. They tend to run towards the equator. So I think some of these major rivers like the MacArthur, they do dump into this bay here, the Gulf of the Carpentaria. This right here is the MacArthur River. And you have the Robinson River and the Wyvern River. And then you have these like little inlets where I think some of this salt water intrusion intrudes into here. So it's a combination of uh, the mixing of the water here in the Gulf of the Carpentaria. I think it's a combination of factors. We have a, a mining factor that could be happening here. I mean, there's been a long fought battle with the Swiss mining company. Uh, it's been affecting the Aborigines, and there was a court decision that was overturned, and they've been, you know, one of the largest mines in the world, not too far from there. And then we have the Fukushima factor, and then on top of that, you have these weather modification changes in our weather patterns. So I, I think it's a combination of all three, really. Really, if you want to get to the bottom of it, we should be seeing testing, all type of testing being done on these mangroves hard data and we're just hearing climate change I'd like to hear more hard data
So he went to survey the extent of the dieback. He described the scene as the most dramatic, pronounced, extreme level of dieback that he's ever observed. Dr. Duke is a world expert in mangrove classification and ecosystems. The images were compelling. They were really dramatic, showing severe dieback of mangrove shoreline fringing, areas just extending off into infinity. Certainly nothing in my experience has prepared me to see images like this. Dr. Duke said he wanted to discover if the dieback in the two states was related. We're talking about 700 kilometers of distance between incidences. The area where the Northern Territory photos were taken is so remote that the only way to confirm the extent and timing of the mangrove dieback was the specialist satellite imagery. With careful analysis, the imagery confirmed the mangrove dieback in both states had happened in the space of a month late from last year. Coincidentally, with the coral bleaching on the Great Barrier Reef, we're talking about 10,000 hectares of mangroves were lost across the whole 700 kilometer span, Dr. Duke said. It's not only unprecedented, it's extensive, it's severe, and it's noticeable. I have not seen such imagery anywhere before from all over the world. I work in many places around the world and I look at damaged mangroves as part of my work all the time. These are the most shocking images of diebacks I've ever seen. Dr. Duke flew to the Northern Territory in June to judge the physical extent of the mangroves damage. 700 kilometers, about 350 miles right here. Dr. Duke said the cause of such extensive damage was not immediately evident. Like a large oil spill, like a cyclone or severe storm. None of those things had occurred in the region in recent times, he said. But in that mix of things that were going on at the time, we're starting to hear about coral bleaching and hot water on the East Coast. He's referring to the hot water on the East Coast of Australia, which would be coming from the currents that are passing through that we were talking about earlier. Now we're talking about what's going on with the reefs. The reefs are starting to collapse. We're getting coral bleaching on these reefs, Great Barrier Reefs of Australia. So we have the coincidental timing of the coral bleach on the Great Barrier Reef and the dieback of mangroves in the north that they can always get away from it and say the reason is from far away, it didn't happen over here. You know, don't look at our, you know, mining operations, it had nothing to do with that, it's nothing pollution, you know, they always want to, you know, that's, that's a convenient thing about them always saying it's climate change. He said the lack of fresh water and increased water and atmospheric temperatures stress the plants beyond their tolerance. Satellite imagery pinpoints the damage to a period of around four weeks in September. Dr. Duke said, many people see mangroves as ugly. They don't look as pretty as coral reefs, so they don't get that attention, he said. But the health of mangroves has a significant impact on the commercial amateur fishing industry in Australia. Mangroves are essential breeding grounds for fish stocks, including prawns, crabs, and in North Australia, fine fin fish such as the barramundi. Dr. Duke said he had heard anecdotal reports of lower than usual fish catches in the area of the Northern Territory he surveyed in June. We have fish dying off, berry reef dying off, and now we have resilient mangrove forests die off.